going to replace the bearing with one of these Timken bees knees bearings and we'll show you how it's done. So first we're going to loosen the lug nuts and then we're going to jack up the car. put it on the axle stand because I don't want to die so just quickly before I take this wheel off and we start changing the bearings I want to show you how to check the bearing now if you see my Instagram story you'll you'll know that I've tightened up the bearing to get me home and um, so there's not a lot of play in it but I know it's knackered um, way to check the bearing is you grab the wheel and with it off the ground you don't hold it at 3 and 9, you hold it at 12 and 6. 3 at 9 you've got the steering play, whereas you hold it at 12 and 6 and you've got the bearing play. And it, if it's knackered, you'll have movement in the wheel. Now like I say, because I've already adjusted this and tightened this right up, there's no play in it. But the bearing is gone. Yeah, see there's no play in it because it's really tight I did that just to get me home but when I did it at the side of the road there was quite a lot of movement in fact it was wobbling quite badly um, so that's how I knew that the bearing was knackered so the next job we're going to do is remove these front pads and then the caliper will come off the disc easy and we'll just secure the caliper up out of the way. Remove the caliper with a 12.13 mil socket. There's two bolts in the back and obviously the, the pads are on the springs. Next job is to remove the dry flange. Now I've got heavy duty dry flanges. On the standard one you'd have a rubber cap here. You just pop that off and behind it is a circlip and some washers. But I've got this nut which is actually a 52mm socket. Now if you haven't got one of these and you have a Land Rover, there's something going wrong because you need these for the drive shafts. The wheel bearings and, and this shouldn't be overly tight because I've recently had it off. That's my solution. So if your hub's spinning, just put a bar in in between the wheel studs and that should stop the hub spinning. Then you can get the leverage on and everything. We might need to do that for the dry flange bolts as well. There we go, that's the cap. So this is what's behind the cap, you'll have a circlip and a couple of washers, so we need the circlip players. Now we're going to remove the drive flange and these are done with 17mm socket. I might have to use the bar again to stop the hub from spinning. Another way to stop this is you could loosen these bolts off before you jack the car up. That way the wheel won't move because it'll be supported by the weight of the car. But you can do it this way. Now we just give the flange a tap with the hammer should just come off. A bit of wiggling. And there we go. Lock nut. This is the lock nut. And then you've got the lock washer. And behind it will be another one. 
Next job is hammer and chisel, knock this tab down and then undo the lock nut. Now with 52 mil socket, and get in and then undo the lock nut. There we go. And then use a screwdriver to apply the washer off. And that's a lock washer. Now I've got the adjusting nut to undo. Again, 52 mil. There we go. So now all the nuts have been removed, the hub should just pull off. There you go. Now while I've got this all off and in bits, I'm going to give it a little right good clean and paint up some of the black parts just to tidy it all up. The stub axle itself doesn't look too bad, it just wants a right good clean up. I'll give it all a good clean and see what it comes up like. Right, so the outer wheel bearing falls out first but the inner bear bearing is held in by an oil seal so we're going to remove the oil seal and then take the inner bearing out and then the inner one is going to be the one that we're going to knock out first and then we can get to the outer one so to remove this oil seal is easiest with the claw hammer you get the claw down there and there we go just being weak just being weak you can see a lot of the grease has it's had water or something in it it's made it go all clarty took the bearing out as well yeah that doesn't look great doesn't look great at all we'll give it a clean up and we'll have a right good look at it so now we're going to turn this over and you might be able to see. We're going to knock it from the outside. Just hope it's not damaged the uh, hub. Now, from in there, I'm going to use a punch, a flat headed punch, and from in there, you can see we've got. Move some of those greets. We've got a lip to hit against. Put it on a piece of wood, that way it doesn't damage the splines of your, your wheel nuts. And just work your way around. There we go. Always keep a rag to clean everything off. 
and there you go that's the inner race now we've got a lip in here and we can now tap the the outer bearing out same again work your way around There we go, give it a clean off, and there's the outer race. Now we're just going to clean the hub out, check it for any uh, burrs, any excessive wear. To be honest, it doesn't look too bad, I think we've got it just in time. Right, we're back on the bench. We've got the bearings out and it's not a pretty sight. It is a mucky job, you are going to get mucky. Normally I do wear gloves but I've run out of gloves so I'm just going to have to wing it today. So the outer bearing, you can see there's actual marks on the outer race where it's been either moisture's got in or something and it's been wearing away. Um, but the bearing itself is still free to move. The inner bearing is a different story. The inner bearing is very heavily corroded. The the outer race is very rough and the actual bearing itself with the rollers is pretty much sea solid. Whether that's happened because I've tightened it up to get me home I don't know. It could be looks quite rusty as well so I think that probably the seals failed and allowed water to get into the bearings and um, and then also I've tightened it up to get me home which has just kicked the bearings in the teeth really <laughs> um, so yeah I mean it's just, I can literally just move it knackered so good job that we're changing them they have been on the car for about five years and I didn't check them as often as I should have done. They should really be checked every year, I'd say. Checked every year, re-greased, readjusted, and uh, if there's any signs of corrosion, replace. So the next job is to clean the hub out and check it over. There's quite a bit of grease in there, so give it all a right good clean. Another thing to note is don't throw the old bearings away, they will come in handy for when we're fitting the new ones. Looking at the bearing seats, it doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of corrosion, a little bit of rust. So what I'll do is, I'm just going to go over it with a bit of light emery cloth and uh, clean it up a little bit. Especially on the bit where the seal goes. So I think the old one failed. So I've just got a bit of emery cloth and I'm just going to work the way around and just clean off any corrosion. Right, so what I'm going to do blow off any of the dust and give it another good clean make sure everything is spotless get an old drag clean everything out last thing we want is grit in there bearings won't last two minutes. There we go. We'll go back down there to the bit of wood for knocking these bearings in. Right, 
So we've got the old bearing race from the old bearings. That's what we're going to use to knock in the new bearings. And we've got the new bearings. And a little tip right on each one. Which bearing it is. Because these are mated to each other. So they need to go in the same place. So if this is your outer, right on outer. This is outer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write outer on the box. Take the race. Put that back in its bag. And put it back in its box. That way it keeps it nice and clean and we know which bit it's for. So now we're just going to tap this one into here. And we're going to use this. To tap it in. It's working across motion. Trying to take your fingers and you want it to go in straight so and when you hear the noise change that that means that the bearing is on its seat and check it round on the inside you can see it's up tight against the seat. We'll flip it over. Use your punch. Just tap the other one out. And that's it. Nice clean race, seated properly. I'm going to do the same on the other side for the inner. So again, I'm going to write inner on this one. Can't go wrong then. Same again. There you go. Now there is an easier way of doing that. You can actually cut a slot in the old bearing race and it'll come out a bit easier, but it's no trouble to just tap it from behind. So that's both races in and seated properly. So now we're going to pack the bearings. I'm going to start with the inner one, so I'll get the box with the inner. And I'm using high performance bearing grease. We're just going to get the bearing out. Get a dollop of grease on your hand. Again, if you're wearing gloves, it makes it a lot cleaner. Put the dollop of grease on your hand. Probably got a bit too much there. And what you want to do is you want to get your bearing. And you want to start pushing it into the bearing. You want it to go in between the rollers. And just work your way around. You see, just pushing it. You want it to start coming out of here. 
So just keep working your way around, get plenty in. And this is called packing the bearing. Do it from both sides and you want it to be oozing out. Make sure you've got plenty of grease in. Last thing you want is no grease in the bearing. It'll just fail straight away. work my way around I don't know if you can see as you push it in it starts oozing out and that's what you want you want as much grease in there as possible there we go and I think that's enough and also, what I tend to do is I pack the inside cavity of the hub. It will work its way around anyway, but just give it a good fighting chance. Another smear of grease over the rollers. Just make sure it's all covered. There we go, we'll drop that in. And now I can clean my hands. Because the next job is the oil seal. So the seal that we're using is a Corteco. Don't know if they're uh, a good make, but you can usually tell when they've got the ribs on the seal that they're a good seal. A trick for fitting these use the old bearing race slots over that lip perfectly because you don't want to be hitting that lip and then you just tap it in similar to what you've done with the bearings some people say to do it flush with the hub some people say, say to do it 4mm lower than the hub I'm going to do it flush I've always done it flush so yeah and give it a tap again you don't want it going in wonky So the next job is to pack the outer bearing but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put it on the hub because there's nothing holding it in so I'm going to pack it and then I'm going to put it back in the box and then we're going to get the hub on the car we can adjust this all up and get it all sorted so again get your bearing nice dollop of grease and get packing And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this seal bag because I know that, that will be clean. There we go. And that can go in the car. Right, so we've got the bearing and the hub. What we'll do is we'll just slap this on. I cleaned this stub axle with a bit of emery because it was a bit corroded. I think it's all right. Um, maybe next time we change the bearings, I'll probably change the stub axle as well because uh, it's been on a few years and there's a little bit of corrosion on it. Hopefully, it should be all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of grease from the bearing from the inside the hub. I'm just going to smear it on the oil seal.
we'll slide the hub on. There we go. And now we can put the outer bearing in here. I've cleaned up all the nuts, the adjusting nut and the lock nut. We've got the thrust washer and we've got the locking washer as well. This is a new washer. Not messing about with the old one, trying to straighten it out. For the price of them, might as well buy a pack load and um, just replace them. So the next thing to go in is the bearing. Slide that in. Then the thrust washer. And now I can clean my hands. Next goes on the adjusting nut. Just give it a spin as I'm turning it. And now I'm going to tighten it up to 61 Newton meters as per the Haynes manual. spin and slacken it off I'm going to do that a few times give it another spin tighten it up again give it another spin that will help just seat the bearings in properly and the correct way to do this is with a dial gauge but most people don't have that and you can do it by feel just want to make sure that grease is right in that bearing so I've tightened it up to 61 newton meters. I'm going to slacken it off right back again. Spin it round. Right, now I'm going to tighten it up fully. 61 newton meters. There we are. And then loosen it. And then just lightly nip it up. And I think that'll do. Next goes on the lock washer. And then your lock nut. It's advised that this nut is tightened up to 100 newton meters. Which is there. It doesn't matter how tight you make this because it's not going to affect the bearings. There we go. And that's good nice and smooth and the final job using a chisel and a hammer we're just going to tap over the uh, the tabs just to lock it in place so find where the edges that's, that's not there. Now 
that's locked the inner nut in place so it can't spin now and then we just do the same on the outer face just lever it out whatsoever it's good yeah right the next job is to fit the drive flange now I've seen something on this drive flange that's made me realize why it's failed um, you have a metal cap and um, I watched a video about a guy that fit these and he advised, he comes with an o-ring he advised that you put the o-ring inside the cap like this so that it sits in there but I've noticed when you screw it on the o-ring isn't getting squished it's not getting squashed against this front face so it's not sealing when I took this off at the side of the road, there was moisture inside here and the splines on here are actually, they've got a bit of rust on them. So I'm thinking that's been the, uh, the issue. Never had this issue before on the old dry flanges, but since I fit these, they've dried, they've got moisture in. So I think they actually put the o-ring on here and that way, let me do it that way as you tighten the, the nut up it compresses the o-ring and makes a watertight seal you just got to be careful not to compress it too much because it will damage the o-ring I just hope that it doesn't fly off while you're driving but I think that's how it works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these splines and clean the splines on the drive shaft as well because they're quite cruddy and um, try it that way see if it works <laughs> Now that also means that there could be water in the front diff. So we're gonna to have to drain the oil out. That way the gasket will stick to it. And then we can bob that on. Now we're going to put a bit of thread lock on these drive flange bolts, just a smidge, if I've got any left, there it is, there we go, and we should be able to pull this drive shaft out as far as possible, and then on go your shims, again these are a little bit corroded but should be all right and you split pin and what I'll do is I'll wait till the wheels on the car and it's on the ground and then I'll talk them up that way it's not going to move anywhere so the next job is to give the brake caliper a clean and all the disc everywhere I've touched that's got grease on it clean it all off and put it all back together
and that's how you change your wheel bearings. I'm not going to show you how we put all this back together. You already know, you've done it before. And there's videos on it everywhere, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.